good afternoon again. <laughs> I told you I'd been making notes from some of the comments you've been sending in, <laughs> which I read with much interest. And uh, I picked up on this one. Um, after artificial, synthetic, euphoric highs, how can we find our way back? Back to, well, I presume, peace. Well, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Or perhaps we'll just get bored with it. Tired, maybe. Just tired. Weary. <laughs> when I started to meditate many years ago, it was strongly impressed on me how we needed to practice. And to begin with, we were just given a few minutes twice a day, quarter of an hour, I think it was. And that was considered enough. And then after some time, it was gradually extended to 20 minutes. And then I think the best part of it, a year before I was asked to do half an hour, um, well, of course, first of all, you've got to want it. In fact, I think that, that is the one requirement for meditation, or you might say for truth, or for God, or for whatever you're yearning for. You've got to want it. If you don't want it, well, there's no motivation to work for it, is there? You won't practice. Um, so you remain perhaps in your euphoric highs until you break down or something. It's often when <laughs> our life does, does break down that we begin to reconsider our priorities. So again, uh, these apparent misfortunes are often blessings in disguise. Um, and then if we do, if we are able to introduce uh, through some sort of worthwhile spiritual practice, some, some uh, stepping back from these highs, we might begin to get a bit of balance into the situation. And uh, we might even begin to observe uh, the, the, uh, these uh, synthetic euphoric highs and question whether they're really worth giving all that attention to, whether there isn't something preferable. And then, of course, we begin to work for something better. But, uh, you know, an awful lot of human life is, is lived simply uh, in the rather dark cloud of not knowing any better. And so we go on until we burst, or coronavirus breaks in on us, or something like that, which causes us to reassess the situation. You see, it's all under law, and for sure, if we, if we, uh, if we uh, throw ourselves into excess, well, that produces a consequence, doesn't it? Again, there's a wonderful story in the Bible about the prodigal son who who left his father in heaven, went off into a far country where he wasted his substance in riotous living. Perhaps that's what's been described in this question. Riotous living. And he was, uh, and then uh, he lost all his money and he just got a job hiring the pigs, for feeding the pigs. And there, he, as the Bible says, the most interesting phrase, he came to his senses. Now, 
coming to your senses is exactly what I talk about, feeling your feet on the floor, listening and looking. You come to your senses and then you begin to think, well, there's more to life than, than this. Next question. Now then. Thoughts on what do you think of black magic and dark arts? Well, that's easily answered. Not much. I had nothing to do with them. I was well advised to steer clear of such things as a student of meditation. And I've never been attracted, dears. I like the light. I like sunshine and fresh air and freedom. I'm not interested in darkness. You'd be very well advised to steer away from them. Another question asked about hermetic teaching. Well, I didn't know what that was. I was asking Phil and he didn't know, so he looked it up on his phone and um, well, I'm still not quite sure what it is, but um, I've never really been much for following any teaching, really. I, I prefer nature. I really do uh, seriously say to you that, that, uh, that for me, the, the first book of God is nature. And uh, although I have uh, looked into a good many philosophies, especially as a, God, as a young man, and I suppose I quite, was quite well informed then about you know, uh, what various people had written about it. Um, my first and last teacher, I think, is, is just right where I am now. It is life itself. Yes, that's it, life itself, including at this time coronavirus. That's the teacher. Or whatever we may draw out of it. Avoiding temptation. Well, I've never been much good at that. <laughs> I've gone into most of it sometime in my life. <laughs> Nothing there again, my dears. It's Eventually you get fed up with it. You just have enough. I'm not sure it's a very good idea to try to control these things in life. I don't know if those people that have, you know, not allowed their eyes to look at women, if that's possible, or tried not to eat things in their life. I'm not sure that, that they're necessarily any closer to God. People have always thought they could control these things and I'm not sure we can control anything very much. I seem to have more faith in nature, just, just let things happen and in time we grow out of, we grow up. That's what happens, we just grow up. I think the important thing is to, is to is to, it's a very good question to ask yourself, what do I really, really want in life? What do you really, really want? And keep that in the foremost of your mind. And you'll find that most of what we call temptation is, is really a poor substitute for that. It's simply not good enough. So sooner or later we just get fed up with it. And you turn for what? You turn for something better. Like the prodigal son. And another, somebody else asked, uh, I can't remember just exactly what he asked about mobile phones, but I suppose it was, how do we uh, deal with our addiction to mobile phones? Well, again, I'm not very well qualified to answer that because I haven't had one. <laughs> On one or two occasions, Phil's tried to persuade me to have one, but I've resisted. Well, I did have one. 
I've had two actually at different times, but I found them too small. I couldn't see, and, and when I had it, I didn't have my glasses. So I couldn't see it. By the time I put my glasses on, I could read the small print. Oh, I got fed up with it. And I couldn't, so I, just, I don't have one now. I don't bother. Do you know, I don't really like to talk very much. So I don't miss not having phone calls. Because I'm, what I have learned, and this is for certain sure, you know, that the real communication is not speech, it's not speaking, it's silence. This silence is far more communicative than anything through words. I know I'm speaking on these videos, dears, but, but uh, I do hope that you pick up there's a sort of background to these words of stillness of presence and this is really what matters and all the words I speak are really only trying to point you in this direction and this is the infallible and this is where all questions eventually lead and then there are no more questions when we come to this presence, questions just die out, don't they? There are no more questions. No more doubt. No more problems. We're home. At rest. God bless you, dears. Until tomorrow.